Hi, I'm Tim Freiberg. Uh, as Mahalo said, I'm a uh, planning and application engineer at AMSC, also uh, known as American Superconductor. Uh, so our group really does the system studies uh, for our products. And also we handle uh, development of our user models uh, for whatever software platform we need to uh, provide a model for. Uh, just to some basic corporate facts. So uh, our office is, our, our headquarters is outside of Boston in the US. Uh, and we provide uh, a variety of wind energy solutions and also transmission distribution uh, products, uh, which really is the focus of this. Uh, so it's a short outline of the presentation. Uh, so just a little bit on the background of the model development, uh, basically what we're trying to do and why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. Uh, and then uh, just a, a couple slides, just as an overview of our specific StatCom product, uh, which we call the DVAR StatCom. Um, basically, I'm assuming that uh, anyone watching this already knows what a StatCom is, uh, so I won't really go into any detail about that just specifically what our equipment is. And that's really just a reference uh, for the actual model development itself. Um, so again, it kind of gives you a better picture of why we're, you know, why we're writing the model in certain ways. Uh, and then uh, most of the presentation is kind of our experience with developing this model. Uh, kind of a walk through the model itself and also uh, some notes, uh, interesting things or problems that we ran into and maybe some uh, suggestions for anyone who's thinking of uh, starting to write their own uh, uh, black box models or just any kind of a DLL based model in EMTP. And then uh, just some, some simulation results, uh, just some of the initial tests that we've done mostly just to make sure that basic model functions are working. And then uh, also some, what our next steps are on the, on the model development. Um, and after that, it's just open for questions. Uh, so just for background, uh, we've had user development StatCom models for other RMS and uh, EMT simulation softwares. Uh, we've had a number of these, had these for a number of years at this point, uh, and specifically referring to uh, uh, real code models, which or source code models, which integrate the actual control code that goes out in the field. Um, we've been working with those for over a decade um, for yeah for various platforms, um, and now we've recently started seeing. The requirements uh, for some projects that we bid on for models written specifically in EMTP. Uh, we've seen these for both uh, black box or uh, encrypted uh, source code models or real code models, and also for uh, white box uh, open models, which uh, were more generally built up just out of uh, you know, blocks, block diagram based uh, models, which anybody can go in and look at which is really the distinction, the black box model, the user really has access to whatever parameters the manufacturer has chosen to allow access to and really can't see anything else inside. Um, and so looking at these project requirements, we decided to, since EMTP is a new software for us, um, we decided to start with the, the black box uh, real code models and essentially uh, adapt our existing EMT model for uh, the EMTP platform. Uh, and so really uh, everything I show here is still kind of a work in progress, um, but as of this presentation and what I'm showing here, it's the model really is in a, is in a functional state. So if we had to, we could provide it to, to someone and it would uh, should more or less do what you expect it to do. Um, 
yeah, so just a, a few slides just to cover exactly what our statcom looks like. Um, so it's just some, some terminology, uh, just because I will probably just be using these terms uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, we have what we call our, our master control enclosure, or MCE, which is essentially the, the high level voltage controller. Uh, so this is what is actually uh, receiving uh, voltage measurements, current measurements from whatever the monitoring points and control points at the that we need for this project, and also you know, any SCADA connections or connections to uh, like a wind plant controller, uh, and then it makes all the calculations, figures out what the uh, inverter should be doing, and sends current commands to the individual uh, statcom units, and then also uh, yeah if we have uh, switched shunts as part of integrated as part of our system then this is also issuing the you know the close open commands to those those shunts so capacitors or reactors um, and then we also have what we call power module enclosures or pmes uh, so these are essentially just the uh, inverter cabinets so these contain all the power electronics so these are really the, the statcom modules themselves um, and the uh, the inverter modules we refer to as uh, power modules are specifically for this project. They're, they're called PM2000s. Um, so I have a few spots in this presentation where I just basically refer to MCEs or PMEs or PM2000s. So just to kind of give everyone a picture of what I'm talking about. Um, and so our, uh, our, our actual statcom modules uh, operate at uh, low voltage at 480 volts. And so that it requires a step up to whatever the connection transformer is. Um, so in the picture on the bottom right, you can see one power module enclosure connected to, so the power module enclosure is the box on the left, and that's connected to a step up transformer. Uh, so this connects to you know, 1247 kV, 13 kV, 30 kV, whatever you need to go up to. Um, and then as I mentioned, these are basically modular modular enclosures. Uh, so one of these power module enclosures, PMEs, uh, one of these boxes uh, can be rated for four megavar, uh, or we can do two megavar if we only essentially half fill it. But that kind of gives us our step sizes and our, our module sizes. Um, and is just generally uh, how the system is configured. So we can have one MCE controlling a, a large, you know, small number, a large number of these individual modules, which is pretty much what you see here. So uh, we have one MCE just controlling uh, somewhat arbitrary number of uh, power module enclosures of the PMEs. And inside the PME, we've got the actual uh, inverters. So the PM2000s, the, the DC bus, uh, dynamic brake, uh, and uh, inductors, harmonic filters, circuit breakers, all connected to the step-up transformer and then to the, the grid. Uh, and then probably our most common application is renewables. So this is just kind of a general layout of uh, just a reference renewables project. Um, and it's, uh, so we have the, the MCE uh, getting voltage and current measurements from the transmission side of the, or the connection point and from the medium voltage inside the plant. And then that's sending commands to the actual stack-com inverters themselves and also to circuit breakers for switches for cap banks and reactors. And then uh, if there's an external, if there's a wind plant controller, we can also communicate with that and send or receive commands from them. Uh, and so the, the kind of the example case in the MTP that I'll be showing a little bit later is kind of just this part. So just the, the actual, our actual statcom and some switch cap banks and, and reactors uh, just for testing purposes. Um, and then we have a number of uh, kind of what we consider standard control modes. Uh, we kind of break these out into uh, To, uh, regulation control modes, 
Uh, so, or slow control, which really are meant to uh, be in operation when the, you know, our control bus voltage is inside of a normal range, usually you know, 0 0.9 to 1.1 per unit voltage. Uh, so those control modes are, standard control modes are a voltage droop. Um, you can also kind of operate a, a voltage droop negative sequence control, um, power factor, reactive power. So those are kind of our standard uh, control modes there. Um, then we can also, we also have a separate control mode or for transient events, tend to call fast control. Uh, so this is intended to respond to uh, faults on the transmission system. And so again, there's a kind of a, the three standard options we have are uh, basically a voltage droop control again, a, a reactive current control, which is uh, intended for grid codes that require a, uh, or that define a, like a change in reactive current uh, uh, command or reactive current flow during faults. Uh, these, these are becoming much more common. Uh, and then also uh, another negative sequence uh, kind of voltage droop control. Uh, and then also, as I mentioned, we can send or receive reactive power references to a uh, wind plant controller and also control switch shunts. So basically, these are all, all the control modes that are available in our, our standard simulation DLL. And so these are all control modes that have to be usable and uh, operate correctly in the CMTP model. Uh, yeah, so now kind of just going into our experiences with this developing this black box model in the MTP. Um, so just kind of basics of the model. As, as I mentioned, this is reusing um, existing simulation DLLs that we, we already have. Uh, so these are the, the control code and some uh, the control DLL for the MCE and some library interfaces just to improve with the actual commands that we uh, send to the code. And then also the, uh, the, the DLL for the inverters themselves. And then uh, to link this all into EMTP, uh, we've written a interface DLL uh, for that the MCE code. And then for the inverters, uh, we worked with EMTP uh, and the DLL import tool that they've developed based on the IEEE CIGARE standard. And so this essentially, uh, you feed in the, the inverter control DLL to this import tool and it creates an, in, an interface DLL and uh, EMTP component. And then both the, of these uh, DLLs, these models for the MC and for the inverters uh, also use additional external parameter files um, or Kind of for non for non standard parameters or parameters that aren't usually uh, changed, um, and really the that just is because there's just too many parameters to expect to really uh, bring them all into the EMTP like the user interface in the, in the EMTP model, and also to really ex expect any users to uh, understand fully. And so starting off just with the uh, MCE, with uh, the high level controller. Um, so essentially this has a number of uh, inputs of so voltage and current measurements, and then also inputs for uh, references. So for voltage reference, power factor reference, or reactive power reference, um, or for uh, you know, a command from a external controller. And then also, if some inputs for feedback from an external controller. So if, if our system is telling a wind plant controller how many megabar to provide, then we get feedback here uh, just to let us know what the reactive power, right, reactive output of the, that controller is right now and then what the limits are. Uh, and then we have uh, some outputs. So basically outputs to an external controller. So it's just a megabar set point and then the current commands to the inverters modules themselves and open and close commands for switched shunts. Yeah, and so you can see here on the right, so this is the, uh, the user interface, so all the 
list of parameters here, the values of the parameters and descriptions. Uh, so what we've done so far is really only uh, present the most common, either critical parameters that have to be set by the user for each project. Uh, so basically the, the rating of the system, what control mode it's, it's operating in, uh, and some, some you know, the, the voltage that uh, each of the, the PTs is actually set at. Uh, some other some other basic setup things that have to be in here. Then beyond that, we've kind of limited this to the most common operating parameters for the most common operating modes, which are really uh, uh, voltage regulation and then uh, sort of standard transient voltage control. Uh, because there's well over a hundred parameters, and it's not really practical to put everything in here. Um, so everything else is really at the at the moment is can be added in through uh, an external parameter file. And this is kind of a common thing for, for black box models or for real code models from, from vendors. The, the, the parameters that you see, you know, if, if, you, if you double click on the component in your, your simulation case, the parameters that you, that you see there are almost always a limited subset of what's there, um, just out of, out of practicality. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so, so we have all the parameters here and then these have to get passed into the interface DLL. Um, so you can't see it on the previous screen, but at the bottom, uh, there's some, some scripting that you have to do uh, basically. So this is doing is it's passing in the uh, relative path name to the actual control DLL that we need to call. And so in this case, I'm, I'm still, this is still uh, in progress, so it's, everything's down in debug folders. Uh, and then you have to pass in each parameter one by one, parameter name and value one by one. Uh, and if, if you're doing this, you're going to do something like, like this yourself. Uh, really be careful um, if you're copying and pasting new lines. Make sure that you keep that space. So if there's a little bit of there's a little space after the second hash pound or hash mark here. That's actually very important. If you don't have that there, then when it starts transmitting parameters down to lower level components, it runs everything together and the parameters don't get passed in correctly. Um, and then also uh, you need to, at least for us, um, because we're, we're trying to set up our, our model to have all of our actual, all of our DLLs and all of our files in one location, you need to uh, pass down the the path name. Basically, uh, again, it's kind of a relative uh, path name. So we we we'd put all of our this is intended to uh, basically put all of our DLL files in a separate AMSE folder in the working directory where you have your EMTP case. So this is all all very important uh, to pass down to our to the actual control DLL and also make sure it knows where to which DLL to call in the first place. Yeah, and so then when you go into the interface DLL itself, what, which is the, the code that we've written here, uh, then you have to, again, basically read them all in, each parameter in individually uh, and in the correct order. Um, so then you can start passing them in. So it's basically these are the, the read-ins when the model initializes in the MTP. And then these are calls to our actual control DLL passing in the parameter names, so that, so values. These are internal parameter numbers, um, and path name and instance of the uh, controller. And uh, this this can be a little difficult to work with, just because you have to be careful with uh, character limits. Um, so when you're there's a there's a 100 character limit uh, on, in the actual EMTP component itself um, that cuts off after that. So just you have to when you're doing this, you have to kind of, uh, and you start adding more parameters, you have to make sure that you're not exceeding that character limit. And so the, the interface DLL that we've written, uh, like most uh, power simulation softwares, uh, it's written in, in Fortran. Um, and we started from a, a kind of a basic ENTV example on
from a, a basic EMTP example on DLL writing. And uh, I really, if you choose to do this yourself, I really recommend that you do the same thing. Um, that's the easiest and best way to make sure that um, all of the compiler settings are correct. Uh, if you try to do it from scratch and you miss something, it can take hours to figure out what you missed. Um, and I know this because that's actually what I did. Uh, Henry uh, at EMTP had told me not to do this and I did it anyways. So it took hours to figure out what the actual mistake was. And even then it was still easier to start from one of their example projects. Um, and then another, another thing that we ran into here, just be, partly because of the way that we decided to reuse existing uh, DLLs and libraries, uh, it was a little tricky to figure out what the correct uh, compiler options to use were, uh, especially for, uh, you know, for calling C code in Fortran. Because uh, our, our existing DLLs and libraries functions have really been written for kind of around the default behavior of other software platforms. But uh, since this is these DLLs here are uh, externally compiled in Visual Studio, uh, we didn't have that luxury of just assuming that the compiler knew what to do. Um, so it took uh, quite a while to figure out exactly what the problem was. And really, it turned out. The, the biggest problem just turned out to be with uh, passing strings. Um, so I, I learned a lot more about the going from Fortran to C and back than I had known before I started this. Uh, and then kind of a, a useful thing, or something I found useful about uh, writing these DLLs for EMTP is that the, the, the different uh, initializations and first time step and, and follow-ups time steps are all in their own subroutines, which makes it actually really convenient um, compared to some other softwares where you pretty much have to figure out in your in your code if it's been the first time step, if you've already done initialization. Uh, so it's actually pretty convenient that way. Um, and then again, if, if you're, this is something that you're going to do yourself, uh, be very careful about the time steps, um, just because with EMTP, the time step isn't necessarily fixed uh, unless you force it to force the simulation options to be a fixed time step. Um, that kind of takes away some of the uh, advantages of EMTP if you do that. So it's you know best to make sure that your code can work with uh, a variable time step. So in particular, um, you have to check. So at least for our DLL, for, the, for this, this particular DLL, our control code, it's OK with a variable time step. Uh, you just have to make sure that you're actually calculating what the time step was and passing that in. Um, this can be kind of an, if you don't do this, at least in our case, it comes up as kind of an odd condition where the controller just doesn't start or will uh, kind of, uh, or the, just the, the commands will be kind of garbage in a strange way. Um, essentially because you go from your your expected time step to a half time step and it shows up as a as a huge frequency deviation. Um, and so at least when it, in our case this is happening before the controller really started up so it just wouldn't start up because it was seeing an invalid uh, initialization condition. Um, so this is definitely something to be aware of. Uh, yeah, so then moving on to the, the PME, to the actual uh, STATCOM module itself. Um, so as I showed before, we have this, you know, we have the, the actual enclosure on the left, but, well, this picture on the right, the enclosure is the box on the left, and then we have a step-up transformer. So we, we do the same thing in, in EMTP. So we have our, our connection transformer from 40 volts up to, in this case, uh, 34 and a half kV. And then the module itself is actually pretty simple in terms of inputs and outputs. We really just need to pass in the, the current commands to the actual uh, inverters themselves. And then there's an internal circuit breaker in here. So if that breaker trips, then we just need a, that signal to come back to our, our high level controller. Um, and really the, the intent here is 
to keep this basic layout and just uh, be able to scale scale the module for whatever system size we actually have. Uh, and so the the parameter yeah the, the parameter list here is is again fairly short. This is actually all of them here. Uh, so essentially, uh, you can scale up the rating, kind of select between um, a voltage source representation of the inverters or an actual uh, IGBT switching representation, and then uh, some you know you can enter the frequency, the the time that you want the inverters to actually enable. And this is uh, one of those things that that there is a minimum time for this, just because the control code needs time to pick up what you know, to, to measure the, the line frequency and pick up the the actual uh, the PLL needs a chance to lock on to the actual uh, phase and, and everything. So there's kind of a minimum time there, and then certain protection functions. So the yeah, we can we can set the, the overcurrent trip or the DC bus over voltage uh, protection, and you know, and, and frequency inhibit settings. Um, so, but there's really not a whole lot of uh, parameters that normally get changed here. Uh, and then you go inside that module. Um, so you have the, the connection to the grid, uh, harmonic filter in here, um, the the voltage source representations, the, the IGBT representations, uh, and then further further level down is uh, the inputs the actual where the actual components for the inverter code are, and then some more uh, like protection logic down there, and uh, just a lot of other things to come up with uh, firing pulses and duty signals to the different representations here, uh, and. And um, yeah, so right now up top, we've got this little slightly complicated thing to kind of open and close circuit breakers, depending on which representation you want to use. Uh, but I did have a call with uh, Henry DMTP last week, and we pointed out a, a, probably a better way to do this, where you, you do some JavaScripting and basically just uh, include or exclude the components that you, you want to use. Um, so that's definitely a, a future update. Uh, to this component here. Um, and I'm not really I'm not really going into any more detail on on the actual voltage source representation or the IGBTs or looking inside of here just largely for time because uh, that could, that could easily be <laughs> you know, like another hour by itself. Um, so this is kind of just an overview of, of what's inside the, the box basically. Um, and so, yeah, as I mentioned, the, the actual interface to the inverters themselves uh, is was provided by EMTP. It's a result of uh, putting our control code into their DLL import tool, uh, which gives you this nice little component here uh, with the inputs and outputs um, and a couple of uh, parameters that you can the, the pass in. Um, and it basically it automatically accesses our control code, the, the DLL for our control code, and also makes unique copies for different instances, and then deletes them after the simulation is done, which is actually nice, nice and handy. Um, yeah, so there were we did have to go through a few revisions uh, with MTP to get this to work correctly. Uh, in particular, again, that that variable time step was, was a problem. Uh, we had to work with we had to work with the MTP to add uh, uh, an option to the to this uh, import tool to prevent the, the DLL from being called more than once per uh, overall or once per standard time step. Um, again, otherwise, uh, it basically re results in what looks to the inverters as huge frequency swings, and really. This is the, the PLL frequency that was tracked when we were having these problems. This is really just bouncing between the, the limits, the frequency limits on the PLL. And it never, and this is actually zoomed in quite a bit. So these are getting close to individual time steps here. And really just was just oscillating wildly and would never ever track. Um, so yeah, so really, I guess the running theme here is be, be careful of the variable time steps. It's different. Different from other software platforms, um, 
So you just have to uh, adjust your code to adjust your code to match that. Um, yeah. So then, uh, just a few slides, just kind of showing our the test case that I've been using, and just some basic tests, just to demonstrate that the the model is functioning and at least doing what we expect it to do. Um, none of this is benchmarked yet which is something we will be doing. Um, but this just generally shows that for you know, a change in voltage set reference, it, the output increases the way that you'd expect. And similarly, that there's a, a correct looking response to uh, transmission faults. Uh, and so this is the test case we were using. So the, uh, the MCE, the, the main controller, is here in the bottom left. The uh, stack on modules and transformer are here in the, the middle on the bottom. And then I also added a component with some switched caps and reactors here, just to demonstrate the control of the shunt devices. Um, various meters here and, and, and probes to, just for debugging purposes, just to make sure everything is, is as I expect it. Uh, the step up to the grid, the transmission voltage, and then uh, just a, an adjustable fault or selectable fault for you know, three phase or two phase or single phase, just to generate a, a short uh, fault so you can see the response. And then uh, just some just selectable options here just for uh, some simple uh, steps to vol the voltage reference or just holding a steady voltage reference. Uh, and so the simulations, so this is. This is showing for a step up in the voltage reference. So the top left here uh, is the red is the actual voltage reference input, and the blue is the positive sequence voltage at the control bus. So in this case, the 230 kV or the transmission level. Um, so you can see here at two seconds, the red steps up from 1 to 1.04. So that's a 4% step in the, the voltage reference. This is a very stiff grid, so there's not going to be much of a change in the voltage. So essentially, you end up with a 4% uh, difference between your reference and the actual voltage, which is not coincidentally the, the droop setting I, I chose here. So this is operating on a 4% droop. Um, and so on the bottom left here, this is the, the current command to the inverters. Uh, so this is on a per unit basis. A so one per unit is full output. So you can see the command going from zero and uh, stepping up almost to one per unit. Uh, so there's a, you know, the voltage is moving a little bit. So I wouldn't expect this to actually breach one per unit entirely. Um, and then you can see here, there's a sudden step, which is actually the cap, one of the cap banks switching in. So if you look in the top right here, it's just showing reactive power from the stack on module itself in red, so steps up. And then in blue is the, the total uh, reactive power from the switch shunts. And so when the one of the cat banks is switched in, that steps up to four megavar, which is the individual rating of the shunts. And the megavar from the statcom module drops by an equivalent amount, uh, which is what we refer to as soft switching to kind of avoid uh, large voltage steps. And then, uh, down here in the bottom right is the total combined reactive power from the stack on modules and the switch shunts. So you can see uh, this is going from zero megavar to just about four megavar, which is pretty much in line with a 4% step in voltage reference for a system operating at 4% droop. Uh, so it did a similar, similar step uh, down here. Uh, so this is voltage reference step, voltage reference step down. So this, it's, again, it's a four percent step from one per unit to uh, 0.96 per unit, and you see this essentially the same response um, just on the inductive side. So the current command goes to almost one per unit inductive. A reactor in this case switches in, and the total reactive output. Uh, so this measurement is affected by the slightly lower voltage as well, but total reactive output uh, is in line with what we were expecting. Uh, and then for a test for a three-phase fault, 
so we, on the top here, we have the, the transmission voltage, so the, the voltage waveform itself. This is a 100 millisecond fault. So you can see the fault goes in at two seconds and then clears at 2.1. Uh, so uh, maybe a quarter cycle after the fault goes in, we see on the middle here, the current commands, so positive and negative sequence, current commands to the inverters. Uh, so this is a balanced fault. So you really only expect a positive sequence command, which is this red trace here. So this steps up. Uh, to three per unit, which is the, didn't really mention this, but this is the overload rating of our individual modules. So, so under fault conditions, they can go up to three per unit current. So this command steps up to three per unit here. And then on the bottom, you can, this is the statcom module current at 40 volts. Um, so you can see this is stepping up. This is going up to uh, about 20,000 amps, which uh, is three times our, about three times our rating here. And so you can see that basically none of this is really a tuned response for any, anything in particular. Uh, it's really just a test just to make sure that the, the controller would go up to three per unit in response to this fault, and then that the current would also go up to three per unit. And similar test here, but for a single phase fault. Uh, so you can see here at two seconds on the top, the A phase drops to 50%. And then in the middle here, the, the high level controller, the MCE pr provides a positive sequence command and then also negative sequence commands, which are the green and, and the pink here. And the current from the inverters on the bottom here is pretty clearly asymmetrical. So uh, again, not looking at if this is the tuned response, but really just making sure that everything works correctly for different faults. Uh, and then we do have a so still is a lot of work here, um, particularly to make sure that the, the scaling of the, uh, the inverter module works correctly. Uh, and we have to test all the different control modes. Um, there's an update to the actual inverter interface component that we're, we're waiting on uh, some changes to the, the SIGRA standard. Uh, then you know, this, any additional uh, finishing touches to the, the masks that we need to do, um, some benchmarking to our existing EMP, mo EMP model that we need to do, uh, and then need to add some support here for uh, load flow initialization and, and snapshot, which is uh, load flow is a little bit special for EMT and for EMTP. Um, so it's gonna be uh, uh, interesting doing that. Uh, and, and any and any other improvements as we start as we continue to work with uh, the team at EMTP, um, and yeah, and just special thanks to, to Henry and, and Anton for helping me so much with this. I uh, would have been stuck for months and months and months if uh, I didn't have a lot of help, support from them. Uh, so that's really the end of the, the presentation. So if there's any questions, thanks, team. Uh, this was really, uh, it was a really a lot in there. Yeah, it was uh, kind of a challenge to yes trim this down to maybe forty minutes. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, one question about the uh, the, uh, the usability of these of these black box models uh, are they to some ex uh, to to what extent uh, briefly are they uh, gray box in a sense. Are there any flags, or uh, that, that that you are that you make available to the to the outside world? Um, sure. So there, again, I, I skipped a lot of details just because of uh, time constraints. Um, but we do have uh, from the we do have uh, status flags and error flags. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of. Uh, I have a lot of additional plotting. So really that, that, that the high level controller component, there's two levels. So there's the outer level that, you, that you're seeing in the case. Uh, and then there's an inside level and there's a lot of extra plotting down there um, for uh, just for error signals, uh, like the control modes, the regulate, re regulating sites, basically what it's trying to do. Um, the inverters have, uh, 
again, similar, uh, like you can, we, we make available like PLL frequency uh, error flags there as well. So if they trip, uh, you get a trip code. Um, so there's, uh, this is drawing on our experience, especially with uh, in, you know, in Australia with AMO, with uh, other EMT mo models, just all, a lot of this has been driven by them asking for more and more and more information. So um, we don't, we don't allow people to go inside the box basically, but we do provide a lot of more uh, signals from inside. Right. Um, well, one related, I mean, you brought me to this point and I guess I can ask you this question now. Um, how shareable these black box models are? Uh, I see a couple of, the reason why I ask is, uh, is I see a couple of questions on, are these black box models something that we can get or how we can get these models for research or for, um, so what are your, or in general, in what, maybe I can ask you a question in, in an easier way, a way for you to answer, in what situations do you typically share these black box models? Um, yeah, so for us in particular, and I think this is in general uh, across manufacturers, this type of a model requires NDAs um, before they can be sent out. Um, other than that, I'm not aware of too many constraints. Um, honestly, I, that's almost too broad of a question. Like who, yeah. who can get them? Because uh, yeah. I, I, I honestly, I can't make that call. Right, uh, yeah. but, but, I, but I suppose it's usually for specific projects and with... Generally, um, I mean, it's not for general public, right? Correct. Um, I mean, we have working relationships with certain consultants who just, you know, they have our, our you know, a template case that they can they can modify if needed, or you know, we can they can just ask us for an update and we can send them one. Uh, certain regulators also have this. So like I mentioned, AMO. So they, you know, you know, certain regulators require you to provide uh, uh, EMT models, um, so they have them. Um, but other than that, largely it's on a project by project basis. So right. uh, we'll set up a model for a particular project. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, uh, now, so it, uh, there, there is a couple of questions in on uh, about related to the range of, uh, I guess, voltage levels that you work with. Um, do you have? Uh, equipment, statcom uh, equipment available for uh, higher voltage levels, transmission levels. Um, so, the highest voltage that we can directly connect to with basically one transformation is uh, sixty, like in the sixty-nine kV range. Mm -hmm. uh, if beyond that, it does require a, a second level of transformation. Right. So we, we can definitely connect to transmission level. It just requires an additional transformer. Um, someone mentions apparently someone who has worked with you or is familiar with your uh, products that you have um, components for, um, I guess this means medium to higher voltage levels. And do they also have their black box models available? Uh, it's really the same model same model yeah so uh i guess i just go back to the example here so really this is this is connected to transmission so this is 40 volts to 34 and a half kv transformer here and this is 34 and a half to 230 kv so it's, it really is the same model the, the components are at a low, low voltage are the same mm -hmm. um i i think you mentioned uh, this perhaps you could comment a bit more on uh on the upcoming benchmarking with with field measurements, you have something you ha you have that in, in plan, right? Uh, it's planned. Yes, um, the plan is still a bit loose at the moment, uh, just because this is this, this is one reason this has taken us quite a bit of time is um, this is not really uh, my group's primary responsibility at the moment. Is we support actual, you know, we support all of our products and we support actual projects. So it, this work gets gets fit in around studies, like you know, studies for new projects, 
follow-up studies for old projects, uh, factory tests. Um, but we do plan on, on, on doing benchmarking. Um, at a bare minimum, we'd benchmark this model to our existing EMT model, just to make sure that they do the same thing. Um, and that model has been benchmarked uh, to the field and to uh, our TDS uh, hardware in the loop. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if yeah, I'd, I'd like to do I'd like to do full benchmarking of everything against everything, but yeah, it's always subject to time constraints. Um, from the waveforms that you've shown, it seems that your uh, transient response time uh, is at the range ten to fifty milliseconds. Is that does that sound correct? Um, well, so as I mentioned, this, this is not really tuned mm -hmm. for any, any particular response time. Um, I, I kind of just, I, I just picked parameters that were kind of, uh, mid range, if, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I wasn't trying to get this as fast as I could. Um, but I mean, really this is 60 Hertz systems. This is, uh, yeah, maybe a cycle to get the current command to ramp up and then it takes a little bit longer for the actual current to, to arrive. Um, I mean, we can do this faster if we do like a direct uh, inject current and command injection to the inverters. Um, if you see like the classic response in a textbook for a stat com, that's actually what they're doing. It's not in response to voltage, uh, voltage dip in particular. They're just basically stepping the inverter command from zero to you know, full output. So we can do that too, but that's not really what I was trying to show here. Right. Okay, well, I, I think uh, these are all the questions um, we got. Uh, thanks a lot, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, we really appreciate you sharing a bit more about, uh, uh, sharing with uh, with the EMTP community about the black box inverter modeling. This is really a, a hot topic, has been a hot topic for, for the past uh, while, and I think it will be in the future as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't look like it's going away or going to slow down at any time. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, I think this is, uh, this is it for today.